Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Final Whistle. My name is Pila Peterot. I'm standing in for Senani Mangisa. Today I'm joined by a very big sports enthusiast, Uungosana Mateshana, and a former Blitzboker Rugby Sevens, Tobelam Daga. What are your thoughts in terms of people calling for Elton to come back and start ahead of Henry Pollard? Go. I may have a bit of bias towards Pollard. Uh, but I mean, look, honestly, uh, facts are facts. Two out of seven is poor kicking stats by any standards, even poor for a primary school kid. So, mm. I mean, uh, by rugby standards, he did have a bad game in terms of his primary role. His primary role is to bang the kicks over. He wasn't doing that well, so he, uh, he didn't do well there. Where he was fortunate, and I think where he's been lucky over um, Elton in situations like this, is that whenever he has a bad game, the box are still able to win. But it's just that when Elton has a bad game, the box are either on the losing side or a, a critical error by Elton actually stop the victory. So if you remember the, the Australian test where we drew, uh, I think we drew 18 all. Okay. In Bloemfontein. It, uh, I think it was, yeah, last one in Bloemfontein. Bloom, yeah. Many felt that the kick he missed should have been a regulation kick for a fly off. And naturally, uh, he, he, he got a lot Tough of... Tough one. That Tough was on the corner. It wasn't on the corner. It, about it, wasn't, in front of the, it wasn't in front of the polls. Look, I'm not saying it was a sitter, but I'm saying that it's, <laughs> it's, a, it, it, it's three points that you want to bag as as a regular kick. Okay, let's bring it. Let's yeah. bring let's bring in Toby here quickly okay. because you're very biased when it comes to Pollard. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you know, for me, the problem is that I've been backing Alton for a while, mm. but he hasn't delivered. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been delivering. Yeah, I've thought. been backing him week after week after week after week. <laughs> So I honestly have no issue now that they Pollard has taken the draw. Yeah. No, 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 I've, I've, I've tried. I've been yeah. backing him. So as much as you, you're saying it's not, a, it's not a fly-off issue, it actually is. We have a mm. huge issue at fly-off. Because if Pollard is not, is not performing, Yankees is not performing, mm. at least now we've got Damien who we can try out. But when, where else do we go? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, experience, experience. I, think, I think just to add to Elton, because I think let's be fair to Elton here too. Uh, Elton, as I, say, as I mentioned earlier, is that where he's been unlucky is that when he's not playing well, the box don't win. And I think, again, Elton was in there during, call it uh, the Alistair Kutsia era, where, I mean, it really, it was a team on the build. It was a team that didn't know that was, where they were coming or going. He was given the pivot role. Fine, he, he <coughs> didn't perform as well. But I think, um, I mean, many rugby pundits have actually said so. I think Usim Nikiwa Tlabandisa wrote a really nice article about Elton, saying that I think what Elton probably lacks is the support that many a player would actually get from, call it their fan base and even their home union. I mean, I think we, as a country, very quick to turn on Elton. I mean, I was disappointed a few seasons back where he was even getting booed at Ellis Park, you know, which is his home ground. So that's where, it, you call it uh, on the softer side, Elton may not necessarily have the same backing as per what a hundred okay. would have. And now, I think talking on Twitter and Instagram and everything else, a, a key narrative that has come through is that had Elton missed the kicks that Pollard missed over this weekend, his head would have been on the stake. Yeah. Fair, fair. But now I, want, I wanted to ask this question now. Um, since, since you say that uh, Elton tends to be on the losing side when he gets to play for the box, why can't he, why, why didn't he start this past game then? You, you see... Because I think now it, yeah. it, it boils down to, if you look at the English test, the first two games were vital for the Springboks to win, right? Mm. So now if we played him under that setup, instead of playing him in a Mickey Mouse third game in Cape Town, <laughs> where, <clears throat> no, but I yeah, mean, it's yeah, a dead rubber game. game. Yeah. So yeah. for inst if, 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 we can't, if we can't put pressure on him for in the first game, let's put pressure on him on the first game. Let's see how he performs mm. on a must win game. Yeah. Not dead rubber games. Mm. And then let's see how he performs then. And then, and then we can make judgment. Yeah instead of making judgment in a wet and cold and windy Cape Town where the ball is sticky, I mean, so... Yeah, I, I, I think, so if I can come in there, like probably the question I'd be asking uh, Rasim uh, now personally is who's actually his number one fly -off? I get the sense that at the moment his number one fly -off is Andre Pollard. No, it is. Yeah. It's 100%. Uh, added to that then, a, a bigger question that, okay, if Andre Pollard is your number one, do you then put Elton Yankees on the bench as call it a pure reserve cover for for Pollard, as in he only comes on when he's injured, or he comes on call it in the last quarter as an impact player, 
going in because he's got the X factor about him and 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 you know very similar type of thing that um, Dan Carter had going with Bowden Barrett you know when when we started to be blooded in my sense would be that I've always felt that Elton is a starter so if he's not really if he's not going to start he's not actually uh, as valuable coming on as quality impact player okay and the same thing with Andre Pollard so if you're not going to start with Pollard I don't really see him giving you a lot more benefit coming on as an impact player which then brings in the question about Damien Willemsen who to me in this country is probably the expected player we have so if then we're saying that we 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 hanging our hat on Elton at 10 I mean on on, on Pollard at 10 then probably the brave question is to say that okay are we then saying now we're going to start blooding in Damien McKenzie as an x-factor coming in call it in the 60th minute uh, 70th minute when the guys are a bit flat and the holes are opening up and he's got the ability to uh, step on on both feet and accelerate very quickly you know so now if i was a coach that's where my head would be at around this whole uh, flower thing at the moment not mm. your take no no i i completely agree with you Paul, because for me as well i'm glad you brought for instance the the new zealand aspect of it where carter was starting and then barrett was on the bench but there was a time where Carter was starting and, and Aaron Cruden was on the bench. For me, that didn't make sense because they had the same type of game. Yeah. You needed that X factor player to be on the bench, which made sense once Barrett was on the bench. It, it's almost like if Carter's not starting, I'll start Cruden, then Barrett's going to stay on the bench. You, you, you see what I'm saying? We'll come to New Zealand. We'll no, 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 I'm just making an example. <laughs> no, I hear you. I, so I, I, I'm glad the thing is, I with the you. box as well, mm. we need to have the same sort of setup. If you have two then, similar fly halves, then the bet that are going to play the exact same game, who's going to be bringing in that X factor? Then the best option would be fly, um, Elton moves to ten, Pollard twelve, what's his name, um, yeah. Vil- Vilimsa can can operate either at fifteen or at ten, so he can still come. He can he can still play that utility role at the back. He can even play wing. Yeah, I well, mean, well, there's no need to rush him. Yeah. At the uh, moment, uh, we, we can try that on the weaker sides first. It's not, it's not the time to try now. Well, Argentina's yeah, been giving us a run of our money. Giving us a for, for the past <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> we need it against Italy. Yeah, at I mean, the moment, so end of the year tour. End of the year tour. We can try that against the problem. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think to, to bring it back, well, the question <laughs> I ask you about that, Pilar, when you start saying you want to move Pollard to 12 and then put Elton at 10, I'm then going to start saying to you then that you are basically conceding then that you want Elton on the field because it's a critical part of your game, okay? But from the games I've seen... and the Rice is boot. Okay, critical boot. Is get a uh, from the games I've seen with um, with Rassi, that the four tests, <clears throat> he's number 12. So it was Dialenda in the first couple of tests and then Esther Hazen was going in. But those guys are actually being used as a blocking runners, getting, getting call it the go forward from the line. Old school so, rugby, so all yeah. of a sudden, if you're going to move Pollard to 12, I don't think Pollard's going to give you the same go forward as what Damien Dialinde as well as uh, Esther Hazen will in terms of just okay. being a flat straight hard in, in the 60th know? minute and 70th minute do you still want a blocking runner at 12? Because the game opens up at that, at that point. Well I mean I suppose that all depends on, on what situation I find in the game, myself in the game because if the game's still tight I still do want my hard man there but if I see the game's opened up I probably do also want to open up a little bit you know. I think where I'm challenging you there Pilar is that to move now, to, to go disrupt another channel because you've got an Elton and, and, and Pollard problem, what does it do for the overall balance of the rest of the team? I think primarily we should just focus firstly and say who is the best flower we have in the country for the game we want to play and then that is a guy we must back for that. I feel like the country is divided as it is, to be honest. Okay. Rugby supporters. Yeah. Half Pollard, half uh, Elton Yankees. But the problem is now, I mean, oh, not even a problem. I mean, you can still work it out. I mean, these, these are professionals. This is a professional era. As a coach, this is actually what you should be working on on a daily basis. This is what you, be, you should be dreaming about. This is what you should be working 24-7 to make sure that you find the right combinations for your backs. So a ten and a, a ten, two tens on the field is not, a bad, is not a bad thing, as long as you can use your, your, your screen passing very well. I mean, have those have those um, <clears throat> those runners in front pass to the back. Have your second flower off. We can also create pause. I believe Pollard can actually run with the bo- run yes, with the does, ball very does, well. Yeah. So I mean, if he gets the ball nice and deep now, not at at, at 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 first receiver. Now he's out wider. In the middle of the park, he's got plenty of room. He can he can utilize his inside. He can utilize his outside. He can use his boot. So I'm thinking in that perspective, in terms of how we can use an Elton and a Pollard. 
Okay, because you look at how England won the the, the 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 Six Nations for two years in a row, how they used um, Ford and Ford and, Ford and, and Farrell. Farrell. Yeah, but I mean, to add again, Pilar, you remember in the twelve situation, you've still got a young serpent that I think this country's forgotten about. Okay, <laughs> you've got a Damien Terry <laughs> who's also still into. So I I just get nervous, guys, when all of a sudden we want to move flowers to centre. Don't not get nervous. Not not because you've Don't got get a, not because you've got a centre problem, but we've got a fly off problem. You know, that's my but, concern. No, that's true. But I mean, even defensive wise, oh, that will be a big problem. That is key. That now is you key. put those two guys there. New Zealand's going to target that channel the whole day. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I think we should leave it at that. With uh, with, yeah. with, but, with but, but to add to what was interesting that happened on Saturday is when Valimsa came on, he played twelve and Pollard moved to twelve. I mean, mm. he played ten and Pollard was 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 was, was twelve. So maybe Rasi is thinking about what you talked about. Cool. Well, let's leave it. At the, let's leave it at that with the uh, with the uh, with the fly off at Pollard and uh, Elton Yanchi's issue. Um, we'd like you to follow us on uh, social media. On Twitter, we at grit underscore sports.